Number six, calculate the density of a 2412 magnesium nucleus, okay? And they want that density in grams per milliliters. And assuming that it has a typical nuclear diameter of 1 times 10 to the negative 13th centimeters and is spherical in shape. Okay. All right, so ultimately the question is asking for, we want that density of that magnesium nucleus. Okay, so a formula from the long forgotten past, right? The density formula. But density formula is just a mass, grams, divided by a volume, right? Whenever in doubt, um, sometimes with these simple formulas and a good um, trick for physics, if you're just finding out, like if you're trying to solve for like a velocity or an acceleration, um, always look at the units and see what you have because the units will tell you a formula to use, right? In this case, if we're solving for density, right? So density, I know that I need to have a gram value on the top and a gram value is always the mass. So I'm looking for a mass on the top and a milliliter on the bottom. And I know that a milliliter is a volume. So in essence, I need a mass divided by a volume. Okay. Now I'm reading here and they don't really say anything about a mass just yet, right? They don't give me any mass values but they do tell me that I have a diameter of one times 10 to the negative 13 centimeters and is spherical, that's interesting, in shape. Now I see the word diameter, right? And a sphere. So if something is spherical in shape and I'm trying to solve for the volume, I must use the volume formula for a sphere. Going back to math, do we know what that volume formula is? Drum roll please, it is right here, right? Here is the volume of a sphere. So a volume for a sphere, and maybe I'll just put that here. The volume for a sphere is four over three pi r cubed. Now all these are constant values, four over three. The pi is the pi on the calculator. The only thing that we don't know is this r value, right? And that's the radius. Well, did they give us a radius? Eh, they gave us a diameter, and we know that two radius, or two radii, equal one diameter, right? So if I just take that diameter, and maybe I'll do it over here, diameter divided by two will always get me my radius. So all I would have to do is one times 10 to the negative 13th divided by two. And that will get me my radius. Okay, let's plug it into the calculator, right? I'm just plugging it into the calculator just so that I have the number ready, but one uh, to, to uh, times 10 to the negative 13th. Oh, oh boy. As we can see, haven't used the calculator in a while. I have to, Christina, you have to divide by two. Okay, there we go. All right, so we now have a R value, a radius of five times 10 to the negative 14th. And that's going to be for this R value. And for that, we can find the volume. So let's go for it. V equals, we have a four over three, whoop, four over three, and we're gonna times that by pi, the pi value on the calculator, and then we're gonna take that R value, which we had five times 10 to the negative 14th. And keep in mind that this is still in centimeters. So I'm gonna keep that there and I'm gonna cube that. Now you can plug this all into one shot on the calculator, but if you feel more comfortable doing it in parts, go for it. I'm gonna plug it all in in one shot. So I'm gonna say four divided by three times pi, pi is the second carat top, and just make sure that your um, calculator is in degree mode and not radians. And then I'm gonna use those parentheses five, and actually what I'll do is I'll just take this value, delete that, and then we'll cube that, we'll raise it to the third. And I'm just making sure that I didn't make any mistakes, four over three times pi times that to the third, press enter, and there we go. 
Now, since this isn't the final answer, I try not to round as much, but I'm going to just write out a couple of values on the screen here. But when I do my final calculation, I'll use the full value that's on the calculator. So we'll say maybe 5.23599 because of rounding times 10 to the negative 40th. And it kind of makes sense because um, you have, we're talking about a nucleus here. So of course, this is going to be very, 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 very small. We cannot see atoms with the human eye. They're too small. And keep in mind that a volume for centimeters, since you have three of these centimeters, this turns now into centimeters cubed. So we now have the bottom number. So basically 50% there. 5.23599 times 10 to the negative 40th, and that's centimeter cubed. Now you might say, well, wait, 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 right? They're asking it for milliliters. But remember that for every one centimeter cubed, it's the same thing as saying mils. So you can just substitute out now the centimeter cubed for a milliliter, and maybe I'll just do that. So just know that centimeter cubed, millimeters, they're the exact same unit. Okay, now we gotta get that mass. Hmm. Now they didn't say specifically what, you know, what mass we're at, but we do know that we have a 24 on the top, a 12 on the bottom, and it's a magnesium. And we want to know the density of the nucleus. So I asked myself, well, what is in the nucleus? Well, there's two subatomic particles. There's protons and there's neutrons. And E U T R O N S. So maybe from this nuclide notation, right, I can find out how many protons and neutrons I have. If they give you this type of notation, remember that the smaller number, if they give you two numbers, 24 in this case and 12, the smaller number is always the atomic number. So the smaller number is the atomic number, and that is the number of protons. So the atomic number is always the number of protons. The Number on the top, in this case 24, is the atomic mass, and that has protons. What do you think else? Yeah, protons plus the neutrons. So it's got both in there. So right now we need to know basically the total mass. So we have to find out how many protons we have and how many neutrons we have. Well, we have an atomic number of 12, so that means that I definitely have 12 protons. Okay? And now, well, if I know that my mass is 24, which is protons and neutrons, and I got 12 protons, what would I have to do with these two numbers to get just my neutrons? Yeah, I'll subtract these two, right? So 24 minus 12 is a beautiful 12, right? So we got 12, and that's neutrons. So maybe I'll just put that over here. All right. So now we know how much we have of each. But we still need to know some type of mass, right? Now we know how many protons and neutrons we have total, right? We have 12 protons, we have 12 neutrons, but we still need to know that whole entire mass of the whole entire nucleus. But here's some information that we know uh, about protons and neutrons, that the mass of one proton is about 1.0073 AMU, and the neutron, even though it is standard to say that protons and neutrons have the same mass, if you round, they will definitely have the same mass, but neutrons are actually a little bit bigger, right? Neutrons are a 1.0087 AMUs. But in this case, I got 12 of each. So for each one, I have to times by their respective weights. So for the proton, I'm going to take my 12 and times by 1.0073 to get my total AMUs. And then for my neutrons, I'm going to times by 1.0087 AMU and get that mass, right? 
All right, so we got 12 times 1.0073, right? 12 times 1.0073. I get 12.0876 AMU coming in from the protons. And then we got 12 times 1.0087. I get 12.1044 AMUs coming in with the neutrons. But we still need that mass of the nu the uh, nucleus, so we need the total AMUs. So we'll just add those two numbers up, right? So we'll add the 12.0876 plus the 12.1044. And let's see what we get. So we're going to take the top number and just add it to the bottom number. And total mass is 24 point one nine two AMU okay so now uh, what do we got to do well we're still not in the same unit right I still need grams I have atomic mass units which is AMU there's got to be some conversion between AMUs and grams and you're exactly correct it's this right here so maybe I'll just shrink this down that AMU's atomic mass units are very, 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 very small. It's 1.6605 times 10 to the negative 24th grams equals 1 8 AMU. So if we want to, we can just set up a quick dimensional analysis, 24.192 AMU times by that ratio, right? We don't want AMU anymore. So always place your units on the opposite side. Grams are going to go on top in this case, and the conversion is 1 AMU, so that goes on the bottom, equals 1.6605 times 10, 10 to the negative 24th. Cancel out AMU, and now we're going to find out how many grams we got. So I'm going to take this answer and divide by 1.6605 times 10 to the negative 24th. 1.6605 times 10 to the beautiful. And we get a total now of 1.457. That looks good to me. Times 10 to the 25th. And I already spot my answer because remember, I s or I already spot my mistake. Did anybody catch that? Um, because we said that grams were supposed to be really, really, really small. So why am I getting a 25th here? This should have been times. So I'm just going to do this again. Instead of divide, I'm just going to press the multiply. See, we all make mistakes. And the answer is a little different. Oh boy, what's going on here? Okay. And mistakes are okay. 4.017, we'll call it, times 10 to the negative 23rd. And that's in the grams. So now we know finally what that mass is in grams. 4.017 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams. Voila! We now have the mass. We found the density from before. So let's plug in the density formula. Last but not least, here we go. The mass on the top, 4.017 times 10 to the negative 23rd. We got the volume from before. I know that I mentioned that I was going to get the whole number. So I'm just going to go back and get that whole number to the negative 40. Okay. We're squeezing it in over here, but I think we'll be okay. D equals the density equals this whole number, which is the mass divided by let's find the volume starts off with a five. Here we go, 5.23, yep, that looks good to me. Press enter, aha, 7.67, and I guess we'll do, I guess three sig figs, but does anybody care at this point? This is the last chapter of the book, the, the green book at least. So I would say no one cares. 6.7.67 times 10 to the 16th, and that is in grams per mils. 
Okay. Box that answer off. I don't like the yellow per se, but we're going with it. Happy accidents. <laughs> All right, color, color, color. And let's call it a video. I hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. We also opened up memberships. Um, so if you want to be a member for the channel, you get cool perks. Um, so check it out, you know. Anyway, I hope you're having a great day. I'm excited for the new school year coming up. And I'm excited to be teaching you more stuff. So hang tight and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.